In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about one of the rarest and most unique clocks in my collection. It's a solar powered clock produced in limited numbers in 1962 through to 1969. Marketed by a company known as Montre Royale of Geneva, this clock was made in Switzerland by various companies. For instance, the movement is an Arogno movement from an eight day watch. The advertising and promotional brochure shows that the clock would operate once the light that was hitting the solar panels was 30 lux. And 30 lux, as shown here, is approximately the same as household lighting. Now this may be fine when the solar panels are new, but over the years, as the panels degrade, then so does the ability for the cell to produce electricity. In the early 1950s, Bell Laboratories were working on the development of a solar cell. And ultimately in 1954, they produced the first solar panel. And in each of these pictures on this page, you can see the gradual development and application of these solar cells. And I'm sure the first solar application that we were all acquainted with was the solar powered calculator, which turned up around 1970s. The 1960s is considered to be the space race decade. Technological advancement in those 10 years was going ahead in leaps and bounds. So it's no wonder that when three men went to the moon and successfully returned to Earth, that they were presented with one of these Montre Royale solar powered clocks on their visit to Geneva. Here's part one of the patent covering this clock in figure one showing the plan for the solar panel array in a circular design. Figure two showing the drive motor and a gear train. And in figure three, the electrical circuitry for the solar collectors and for the solar tracking device. Beneath the clock is a tripod with leveling feet and a ball race bearing in the center so that the clock can rotate freely when it's required for tracking the sun. This clock requires no batteries, no mains AC connection and has no storage for generated electricity. All the power requirements come from the solar cells. Uniquely, there are two cells, one on each side of the clock, which act as a solar tracking system. The cells are connected electronically into a null balance circuit so that when equal light is falling onto those two cells, then the position of the base will be optimally oriented towards the sun for maximum power generation. This is the base with the cover removed. And now we can see the back of all of the solar cells in the array around the base and the two directional solar cells on opposite sides of the base. The electric drive motor and a gear train in the center and an electronic printed circuit showing the copper tracing and some of the surface mounted capacitors, resistors, transistors, diodes, etc. We shouldn't forget that it was only in 1956 that this type of printed circuit was developed. And here's an early application, again, aided by the space race. Moving now to the pyramid on top of the base, which really in effect is just three dials, we can see that it's possible to set each of the dials to the same time or two different times for different cities or time zones, whatever takes your fancy. This is part two of the patent covering the pyramid, which contains the three dials, the motion work, and the Arogno eight day watch movement with a vertical drive up into the 
middle of the pyramid with power off takes to each of the dials. The electricity generated by the solar cells has two applications within this clock. First being the motor in the base to rotate the base to the optimal solar collecting position. And the second to a motor up in the pyramid which keeps the mainspring of the watch movement wound. In other words, it's an electric remontoir. There's also a set of gears which have include a motor cutout switch to prevent overwinding and also a up and down indicator. Here we can see the top side of the pyramid base. We can see the motor driven from the solar cells which keeps the mainspring of the watch movement fully wound. We can see the three shafts radiating from the center shaft each going to one of the dials to operate the motion work and the micro switch which is operated to prevent overwinding of the mainspring. The Orogno 26N watch movement is an eight day movement and with the motor continuing to keep the mainspring wound whilst ever sun is shining it will continue to wind the movement until the switch turns off the power. That means that the clock has eight day power reserve should the sun not be shining. Inside the pyramid here we can see the three sets of the motion work, each which will connect to that radial arm that we saw previously to operate the motion work and the hands. This is my clock, complete and original in every respect. It's said to be one of 12 left operating out of the thousands that were produced in the 1960s. The problem with the clock was the degradation of the solar cells. Originally, the output from each cell was 0.7 of a volt. But over time, the output reduced to the point where the clocks would not operate. So were discarded and disappeared. This clock of mine operates beautifully. It follows the sun and will run for a full week without any sun. I believe this is a early example of space technology applied to a very interesting and rare domestic clock. In this short video, you will be able to see the clock rotating under its own power with that differential cell moving from right to left as it attempts to balance the sunlight falling on the clock so that ultimately we get maximum generation of electricity for the power requirements of the clock. If you have any questions or comments about this presentation, you can send me an email at the address shown at the bottom of this page. Thanks for watching.